All right. At Wrestling Between Society, we are heading into March. If you're a combat sports and a professional wrestling fan like I am, then starting tomorrow will be a very exciting month for us. On the WBS, I want to spend a little time talking about what's coming up in this next month. Today is the last day of February, so starting tomorrow, we get a brand new month, and that is March. Obviously, a lot of sports fans are very excited around this time of year, especially if you love basketball. Well, you know what? Eh, eh! We're not talking about basketball here. If you want something a little more soft and a little more sensitivity, then this podcast is not for you. The NCAA Tournament, college wrestling, amateur wrestling, the hardest sport outside of professional bull riding. That's right. The NCAA Wrestling Tournament will be in the weekend of March 16th and 18th. And from what I saw, it's going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, I'm not into details about the amateur wrestling. I can't tell you from, you know, top guy, which middle school he went to, what he ate for lunch. I'm a casual viewer, meaning that around tournament time, I will watch it. It's exciting. It's exciting to see high-level athletes go against each other to try to get to that next level. These amateurs have been training probably since they were three or five. And probably when they saw the NCAA in person or on TV, they had a goal of one day becoming a national champion. Now, the final combat that's in the NCAA tournament will be considered All-Americans. That's why sometimes if you see or hear a guy like Jake Hager and see the word All-American, that means he was one of the final fours. And then once you get to the All-American, the last four in each division, you have guys that are going to get into the final spot. And whomever wins out of the weight class is the NCAA champion. In America, that is the highest prize. Well, wrestling is universal. You have other countries, so that's where the Olympics come in. And then, right now, it's 2023, and I'm assuming next year, 2024, will be the Olympics again. And amateur wrestlers will be competing. You know, a while ago, I started watching the NCAA tournament, began in 2018. And it was the most exciting thing that I've seen in competition quite a while. Now, amateur wrestling, we're talking about the real deal. It's competition, and it's not like professional wrestling where everything's just a purpose of entertainment. Now that you see NCAA wrestling invite some of the things that WWE does, like with the lights, the pyro, and the big entrances, you could see how the NCAA wrestling has opened their minds up. Why? To get viewers to attract audiences. Even though amateur or professional wrestling is my fifth form of combat sport, you cannot put it equivalent as excitement, say like a boxing or maybe even a WWE pay-per-view. Because if you take the top boxing pay-per-view, usually it has Floyd Mayweather or sometimes right now, Jake Paul. Those things right there will draw viewers. That's why I get to pay the big bucks. Well, jiu-jitsu, amateur wrestling, they're not quite there yet. I would like for them to get there, and I think they can get there as long as they keep their minds open for growth. So you can see that I'm excited for the month of March. Well, we don't have just the NCAA wrestling tournament in a couple of weeks this weekend. We're probably going to see one of, if not the biggest, UFC fight. 
John Jones makes his return. He will be fighting against Gagne for the UFC Heavyweight Championship. John Jones is probably one of, if not the best MMA fighter of all time. Now, there's some people that will debate. They'll see either like Fedor Emelianenko, or maybe others will consider Habib Murganov. Well, if John Jones wins the UFC heavyweight title, I think that will nearly solidify his position. And to increase that even more, I believe that he's got to defend the title one time. If he does that, then without the shadow of doubt, John Jones will be the greatest MMA fighter of all time. I mean, the guy really has never lost at light heavyweight. That division right there was run by savages. Guys like Tito Ortiz, Chuck Liddell, Shogo Huha, Rampage Jackson, and at one point Randy Couture competed in that division. All those guys at least defended the title twice. Tito Ortiz, exception. I think he had five or six title defenses. Well, after Tito Ortiz, Chuck Liddell became the guy. He came. He became the guy for a while until Rampage knocked him out. Then Rampage lost to Forrest Griffin. After that, Forrest Griffin lost to Rashad Evans. Then Rashad Evans went to Leo Machida. He lost to him. And then Leo Machida fought in a very controversial fight against Shogun Hua. Lyoto won that, which I just thought at a time was the wrong decision. I mean, if you look at the fight, you saw what Leo Machida looked like. I mean, he looked like damaged goods. Well, he did the rematch. Shogun knocked him out, and he became the guy. Well, in 2011 of March, there was going to be a match between Rashad Evans versus Shogun Hua. At that time... Rashad Evans and John Jones were teammates over at Team Jackson. Well, Rashad Evans gets injured, and John Jones in 2011 fought Ryan Bader. It was on the same car that Anderson fought Vitor Belfort. It was the one that Anderson Silva front kicked Vitor to the face. If you remember, Joe Rogan calls it, he front kicked him to the face. It brings back good memories. Well, John Jones submitted. Ryan Bader and it was at that time that those two guys were considered who was going to ascend up into the light heavyweight division well looking back on there and about 12 years ago John Jones ran through four guys he beat four guys in the light heavyweight division he got the title for Shogun Hua and then he went on to submit Rampage Jackson. And I got to admit, at that time, I thought John Jones might lose against a guy like Rampage. Because at that time, Rampage Jackson was a very, very dangerous fighter. He was a knockout artist. Well, John Jones brilliantly fought Rampage. He ended up taking his back and submitting him with a rear naked choke. And that, that time was a young John Jones. A young John Jones that was basically new in Greg Jackson. After John Jones submitted Rampage Jackson. Okay, then I thought, okay, Leo Machida was a very tricky fighter. His style throws off a lot of guys because they were not used to seeing that. And in that fight, we saw John Jones eat a punch from Leo Machida. And I thought, okay, this is scary. And John Jones ends up finishing with a front guillotine choke. He choked him out. Well, John Jones has set the record for most title defenses in the light heavyweight division. And other than his loss to Matt Hamill, he has gone on to accumulate victory after victory. Some say technically he's never lost. I mean, he's 
never been submitted. He's never been knocked out. And so he is moving up into the heavyweight division. He has a chance to submit himself as the greatest MMA fighter of all time. And I believe if he defeats Gagne, then he's one step close. And if he defends a light, I mean the heavyweight title just one time, he has submitted his legacy. So right now I talked about the NCAA tournament happening in March 16th and 18th. And then you have this coming weekend, Jones versus Gagne. And between all that, you are heading into WrestleMania season. Next month or the month after March is April. And that is when WrestleMania happens. And right now, it's a very exciting time to watch Raw and SmackDown. Because right now, a lot of wrestlers are they're slowly getting to that peaking point. And in the upcoming Wrestling Between Society, I'll talk a little bit more on the current car of WrestleMania 39. Yet, what you saw on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown is that a lot of things are getting set up. We're starting to see what matches is going to take place at WrestleMania other than the title matches. At the same time, you have guys that have not been announced on the card yet. So those guys right there are gunning for positions at the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania 39. So that's what we got seeing on Monday Night Raw and SmackDown in the month of March. So, with WWE geared towards WrestleMania with Raw and SmackDown, with the NCAA tournament in a couple of weeks, and then this weekend you have Jones versus Gagne, this means that March will be a very exciting month for combat sport fans and professional wrestling fans. And yes, you could interchange and you could love both things. This is not the late 80s or 90s where it was taboo. Come on, a common thread between all those three things is that they are businesses and they are trying to make money by putting on exciting events for us to enjoy. And Johnny Alpha is out. Listen to me, Dad. We got to cooperate. We have no choice. We're almost broke. Oh, that's great. I can taste the bubbles. Over at a Top Guys Professional Wrestling, I'm over at WordPress.com, a Top Guys.wordpress.com. Facebook, it is a Top Guys Professional Wrestling page. Twitter is at a Top Guys, and I do have a YouTube channel over at a top guys and over at rumble i'm over at a top guys and wrestling between society is over at spotify